All right, guys, so this is for the Freedom Writers Diary. Um, I have a similitude of what your journal should be looking at. Like, uh, I gave you guys a white journal at the beginning of this uh, process, and I'm going to just go ahead and quickly decorate the front. So I'm just going to put in the title, like I told you guys to do in the beginning. And your name. Those are the two requirements. You can decorate it however you want. Okay. Um, but you can go ahead and, you know, color it, do whatever you want to with it, make your make your title or make your cover page yours. The next thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and do a coat of arms on the back. Coat of arms with something similar to this with a ribbon at the bottom of it. Let's see if I can go ahead and create a ribbon for you really quick. I know the colors are off, I'm sorry. But this works. Okay. On your ribbon, you're going to do your motto. What do you believe in? Okay. On your... Um, in your box, in your boxes, you're going to separate them out. And I'm going super fast due to time, okay? Um, because you guys are getting ready to come into class. You're going to have your name, okay? Here you're going to put your goals. Here you're going to put some things you like. Okay, down here, someone you admire. M I R E. Um, and then over here, what makes you unique? Okay, what makes you who you are today? All right. Okay, so that should be the cover. And please make it a little neat neater than what I did here. This was kind of sloppy because I know that we're getting ready to start class here in just a little bit. I am going to go ahead and take time to read. And as I get through the reading, um, you're going to hear me read and then I'll stop and I'll draw because I told you guys that this is a sketch note. Um, the sketch note di uh, diary, basically, you're going to go ahead and give me some sketches, some quotes, some stated uh, information so that I can see that you're catching on to what you're reading, okay? Um, and yes, I'm reading to you in class and I'm reading to you on here, but that doesn't mean that you can't stop and sketch and then, and then move on with me. So... We'll go ahead and get started. Uh, we're going to start with the freshman year entry. This is the very beginning uh, of a school year and of, of a whole brand new group of kids, okay? This is in the fall of 1994. Okay, and I'll go ahead and read this. We'll see how far I can get before the bell rings. Uh, entry one comes from Mrs. Gruel. It says, Dear Diary, tomorrow morning my journey as an English teacher officially begins. Since first impressions are so important, I wonder what my students will think about me. Will they think I'm out of touch or too preppy or worse yet? That I'm too young to be taken seriously. Maybe I'll have them write a journal entry describing what their expectations are of me and their class. Even though I spent last year as a student teacher at Wilson High School, I'm still learning my way around the city. Long Beach is so different than the gated community I grew up in, thanks to MTV dubbing Long Beach as the gangsta rap capital. With its depiction of guns and graffiti, my friends have a warped perception of the city, or LBC, as the rappers refer to it. They think I should wear a bulletproof vest rather than pearls. Where I live in Newport Beach is a utopia compared to some neighborhoods seen in a Snoop Doggy Dog video. Still, TV tends to blow things out of proportion. I'm going to go ahead and plug in a couple of items that I got from this. Here's my bulletproof vest. Okay. Versus pearls, a string of pearls around her, around her neck. I'm going to go ahead and draw her neck in here. Okay. Um, what should she be wearing? Okay. Um, she is definitely, she's at Wilson High School. in Long Beach, California. Okay. 
The school is actually located in a safe neighborhood just a few miles from the ocean. Its location and reputation make it desirable, so much so that a lot of the students that live in what they call the hood take two or three buses just to get to school every day. Students come in from every corner of the city, rich kids from the shore sit next to poor kids in the projects. There's every race, religion, culture within the confines of the quad, but since the Rodney King riots, racial tension have spilled over into school. Due to bus busing and an outbreak in gang activity, Wilson's traditional white upper-class demographics have changed rapidly. African Americans, Latino, and Asians now make up the majority of the student body. As a student teacher last year, I was pretty naive. I wanted to see past color and culture, but what immediately confronted when I was immediately confronted by it when the first bell rang and a student named Sherrod sauntered in about bouncing a basketball. He was a junior a disciplinary transfer from Wilson's crosstown rival and his reputation preceded him. Word was that he had threatened his previous English teacher with a gun, which I later found out was only a plastic water gun, but it had all the makings of a dramatic showdown. In those first few minutes, he made it brutally clear that he hated Wilson, he hated English, and he hated me. His sole purpose was to make his preppy student teacher cry. Little did he know that within a month, he'd be the one crying. Sherrod became the butt of a bad joke. A classmate tried, tried, sorry, a classmate got tired of Sherrod's antics and drew a racial caricature of him with huge, exaggerated lips. As the drawing made its way around the class, the other students laughed hysterically. When Sherrod saw it, he looked as if he was going to cry. For the first time, his tough facade began to crack. When I got a hold of the picture, I went ballistic. This is the type of propaganda that the Nazis used during the Holocaust, I yelled. When a student timidly asked me what's the Holocaust, I was shocked. I asked, how many of you have heard of the Holocaust? And not a single person raised his hand. Then I asked, how many of you have been shot at? Nearly every hand went up. I immediately decided to throw out my meticulously planned lessons and make tolerance the core of my curriculum. From that moment on, I would try to bring history to life by using new books, inviting guest speakers, and going on field trips. Since I was just a student teacher and I had no budget for my schemes, I, so I moonlighted as a concierge at the Marriott Hotel and, so and sold lingerie, lingerie at Nordstrom. <clears throat> My dad even asked me, why can't you just be a normal teacher? Actually, normalcy didn't seem so bad after my first snuff, and I took my students to see Schindler's List at Newport Beach. A predominantly white, upper-class theater, I was shocked to see women grab their pearls and clutch their purses in fear. A local paper ran a front-page article about the incident and described how poorly my students were treated, after which I received death threats. One of my disgruntled neighbors had the audacity to say, if you love black people so much, why don't you just marry a monkey? All this drama, and I didn't even have my teaching credentials yet. Luckily, some of my professors from University of California, Irvine, read the article and invited my class to a seminar by the author of Schindler's list, Thomas Neely. <clears throat> Neely was so impressed by my students that a few days later he, we got an invite to meet Steven Spielberg at Universal Studios. I couldn't believe it. The famous director wanted to meet the class that I had dubbed as colorful as a box of Crayola crayons and their rookie teacher who was causing waves. He marveled at how far these unteachable students had come as a junior class and what a close group they had become. He now asked Sherrod what we were planning to do next year as an encore. After all, if a film does well, you make a sequel, right? <clears throat> if a class suppresses everyone's expectations, you dismantle it. Yep, that's exactly what happened. Upon my return from university, the head of the English department told me, you're making us look bad. Talk about bursting my bubble. How was I making them look bad? After all, these were the same kids that wouldn't last a month or were too stupid to read advanced placement books. She went on to say, things are based on seniority around here. So in other words, I was lucky to have a job and keeping Sherrod and his posse under another year would be pushing the envelope. Instead, I'd be teaching freshmen, at-risk freshmen, Hmm, not exactly the assignment I was hoping for. So starting tomorrow, it's back to the drawing board, but I'm convinced that if Sherrod could change, then anyone can. So basically, I should prepare myself for a room full of Sherrods. If it took a month to win Sherrod over, I wonder how long it's going to take a bunch of feisty 14-year-olds to come around. Okay, so that's the end of that entry. Um, I noticed that I missed a couple things, so I want to clarify what this is. This is a bulletproof vest. I'm just going to put bulletproof on here, okay, versus pearls. Um, then I'm also going to talk about seeing beyond color. See beyond.
okay? And then the other thing that I really liked that I thought was kind of interesting was that she talked about her class being like a box full of Crayola crayons and as colorful as. And I thought that was cute. So I'm going to just draw a quick box of crayons. I may have put too many lines in. It doesn't have to be perfect, guys. It just needs to be done. Okay. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and add just a little bit of color here. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and take this one. I'll do this. Let me go ahead and enlarge that. Colorful crayon, right? Here's red. Orange. Blue. Purple. Green. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and put down the words crayons. Oops, sorry, I need to lessen that. You're going to get a lot of my mistakes, and that's okay, because we learn in those mistakes. Okay. Okay. So there's my box of crayons. Um, uh, so basically what I got from this is that Mrs. Grell is trying to see beyond the color of her students. She doesn't want to see their color. She wants to see their potential. Um, she teaches at Wilson High School in Long Beach, California, and her friends question why she doesn't wear, why she wears the pearl necklaces and not a bulletproof vest. Uh, basically telling me that the city is really, really dangerous. So she is starting with a brand new group of freshmen, okay? And uh, she is, she's nervous, but I think she's going to do okay. So let's see what she does. Um, I will begin the next journal entry uh, here in just a few because class is getting ready to let out, and I want to be able to have time to work through this. So... Um, I'll go ahead and quit this here, and I hope that this helped, and I will meet you back here soon. Thanks.